Hey Bulldogs, let's see what's happening this week on Co Blue Now. Gabriel gives us some insight on how students from other countries are adapting to American education. Kelvin gives us the scoop on the boys' basketball team's new roster. And lastly, we're back at it again with yet another episode of ATM. Now please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Hey Bulldogs, I'm Derek Fox here with Amy Yip and welcome back to another episode of Code Blue Now. Good afternoon, Bulldogs. That's the first time you'll hear that this year. Not to mention a happy new year, too. This new year is going to be a game changer for Code Blue. Just wait. I just hope it'll be a good year. Not to mention we're seniors who are graduating this year. That's literally months away, and I just know I'm going to be more sad than anything. But we also have some news that'll take place in the upcoming weeks that might upset some. Unfortunately, it's midterm season, and exams take place in two weeks. On January 17th, 18th, and 19th, you'll be taking your exams. Midterms occur for two classes per day. On the 17th, you'll report to periods 1 and 2, on the 18th to periods 3 and 4, and on the 19th, periods 5 and 6. To lighten the mood, they'll also be all half days. But two classes a day sounds even better to me. I already know your AP Physics midterm is going to go crazy. I don't even want to think about that right now. While I would call you a nerd, I'll give you some credit because you've always kept your grades up. I guess so, but my education isn't something I take for granted. For example, people coming into the United States from areas where education might have looked a little different. Let's hear from guest correspondent Gabriel DeSantos, who covers what it means to be an immigrant in the United States. Many people come to the United States to seek new opportunities and a better life, but a lot of people face immediate struggles because they can't speak the English language. Um, my first year, my first experience in America was hard because I didn't know how to speak English. Um, I feel uncomfortable. Well, my first year in America was really hard because I didn't know no English. I have to start all the way down from the bottom. So they kind of have the double whammy. They have to get the English to communicate with peers, with teachers, with classmates, um, and they also need to learn the content. That, so they have to be in the same biology classes, same math. They take the same MCAS at the end of the year, not to mention that they have to figure out how to get around. Transportation is a big challenge sometimes. Um, a lot of the students or their families can't work right away. So they're dealing with all the challenges at school and at home. So I think just the combination of it all. I try to learn speak English um, in a new country. I read a lot of books. Um, I watch a lot of movies. Subtitle. When I came, when I came to United States, obviously I came with a goal, which is better opportunity for me and my family, and then get a better education. Um, difference between Haiti and America. There's a lot of difference between two countries because in Haiti, I can't say it's summer for the old time, but when I'm in the United States of America, sometimes it's cold, sometimes the temperature change. For the culture, there's a lot of culture in Haiti. Also here, there's a lot of culture, but they're different. How can the school itself help students feel at home while adapting to a new one? Having access to resources in their first language has been a huge barrier for students and their families. Things like report cards um, that are translated to send home. Uh, all the communication is primarily done in English. Uh, I think that is an area that the school, the state, the country needs to, to work on is um, meeting families and students where they are um, and making sure that they have access to all the same resources that any English speaker uh, would have. Everyone deserves a chance at a new life to provide for themselves and their family. This has been Gabriel Santos reporting for Cold Blue News. Back to you in the studio. I'm just glad there's a place for everyone here in the U.S., especially at HMHS. You can say that again. But for all of our students, and especially our seniors, the FAFSA is opening up for this upcoming year. 
Be sure to check the Class of 2024 Guidance Classroom for more information on federal aid. Bridgewater State University is also holding FAFSA nights to help complete your application. The upcoming night will be on Thursday, January 25th. If I'm being honest, I gotta put that on my must-do list, even though you literally reminded me about it on Wednesday. You should probably start writing stuff down so you can remember better. As you'd say, I'm a senior, so who cares? So we're just thinking my lines now, okay. At this point, you could just call me a fan, but obviously not of you. I'm talking about a boys basketball team. I gotta admit, that was a good transition into our usual sports report. But who's gonna be our reporter this week? No matter who it is, we already know they'll do a heck of a job. You got me there. Take it away, Jordan. Hey everybody and welcome to the first sports report of 2024. This week in sports, the girls basketball team lost to Southeastern on Tuesday, but the boys defeated Wayland High School in a nail biter 56-50 on Wednesday. Today, there's a doubleheader between Ch Cavalry Chapel Academy, first at 4.30 and the second game at 6.30. Come out and pop out, support your Bulldogs. That's all for this week and back to you guys at the desk. Our basketball teams have been on fire this season. Tell me about it. I got you. Let's take a look at one of our teams specifically and how their season's going. The Holbrook Bulldogs basketball team has seen many notable players play through their courts, the 2023-2024 season being no exception. With the team losing key players such as Owen Burke, Malachi Desiree, and Marquise Dobay Lindsay, the team's roster might have looked a little bare to some. You just coach the players that you have. So you just come in the gym and you work hard every single day, try to get better, and hopefully by getting better you can go out there and compete. I want this to be about them, not about me. This team has seen previous JV and varsity basketball players stepping up to play this year. Allen's game has just improved immensely. I mean, really taking a different level. You know, he, last year he averaged 10, 12 points a game. This year he's averaging 25 points a game. The Bulldogs have also filled in the roster with many new faces. Odin gives us a much bigger post player. Uh, Takari Dingle has Really, really played well. Dakari has a strong basketball background, previously playing for BHS and various AU teams like Spartans. I was excited, like I was more ready. I wanted to play last year, like, I was that ready. With a new roster, also comes a whole new skill set to mesh together. My team's good at like moving the ball around, scoring, because we have a lot of good scores on our team. We pass the ball extremely well. I have a lot of teammates where I can pass it to them. Nah, I, I trust them with it, like I know they can give me the assist. I'm very confident with the roster I have. We go up and down the floor very, very well. Teams have a tough time staying with us running up and down the floor. I mean, Just like every year, the Bulldogs have their eyes set on the win. We haven't won the league, I think, since 2017. The band is behind me. It would be nice to win the league. I just love coaching, you know, so that's, that's one of my passions. Last year they made it to the final four and then lost, so I'm hoping this year can make it like a lot farther. While the season is still up and running, we can't wait to see what more the Bulldogs can bring to the court. This has been Kelvin Manga, reporter for Cold Blue Now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Kelvin. It's nice seeing some new faces on the team, but there's also one thing to mention. Happy birthday, Kelvin. He's really 18, huh? Everyone at CBN is beyond grateful for another year with K Banda. I mean, I guess, but let's bring it back to the announcements. The Children's Hospital Bloodmobile will be at HMHS on Friday, January 26th. If you're 16 or older and in good health, you'll be eligible to donate. If you donate, you'll even get a sweatshirt. See Ms. McDonough for more information and permission slip. But even if donating blood isn't your thing, we know that the Mr. Monteith Games will be. The doubleheader will be held today with the girls at 4.30 and boys at 6. Be sure to wear your purple to support pancreatic cancer awareness, and all proceeds will be donated towards the Mr. Monteith Scholarship Fund. Make sure to come through, not only to support our Bulldogs, but as well as the Monteith family. The games so far are so far from now, so how can we possibly pass the time? I got something up my sleeve, and backed by popular requests, and Tolly, Trey, and Madison have returned. ATM, show them what you got. Can I be in the uh, intro where it's like, ATM, but it's like, ATM. ATM, like money. ATM. ATM. Do you guys know what that stands for? Can I bag you? Top three artists. All, all right now, yeah. Baby Chong, Rio, and Emro. Can you sing a song by Baby Chong? No. Why not? I don't sing. Hum it. I don't sing. Hum it, bro. Bro, I don't sing. Mm. All right, come on, hum it. No. Like, hum no. It. Hum it. I keep saying no. Who's your first one? You said Baby Chong. All right. <laughs> I'm not humming the song. Sing a Baby Chong song. Uh, 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 uh. 
What's up? Black. You had built like a traffic cone with that yellow. Three artists is Drake, Erica Baidu, Lauren Hill. Can you sing a song by one of them? Yeah. Why do squirrels love nuts? Why? American Express. <laughs> you get it, right? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Explain it. I actually don't get it. If this makes you laugh, you buy me some chips. How about that? All right. You, you. What do you call an owl that is a magician? I don't know. Houdini. <laughs> <laughs> Top three artists. Koyla Ray, uh, Didi Osama, oh, and um, DDG. Name five DDG songs. The one with Blueface, the one with Blueface Remix, the one, the one with Blueface Acoustic. That's not the name. Yes, it is. Top five artists. Drake. Drake, 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 and uh, Drake. Are you, That's me? Yeah, are you YPK, right? That might be me. I ain't gonna hit you. I'll dunk on you right now. Actually, let's take him to the cold booth. Theo Dot and the same essentials Fear of God fit puts it up, and it's gonna be off the ceiling. More with the rebound. Do five push ups. Who can top that? Who could be 26? It's ATM, back to you in the studio. Finally. Finally. Is ATM CBN's most iconic trio now or what? That's such a wild statement, Derek. But who else can say they got to ride that Zamboni thing? You got a point. I'll have to mark my calendar for the next installment of ATM. We'll just have to wait and see. But that wraps it up for this week and the first episode of 2024. I'm Amy Yip. And I'm Derek Fox. We'll see you next Friday.